of the rainbow in the garden, woman, and symphonies of music in the sky. Heron's all around us if you're looking, but how can you see it if you cry? Yes, July and the winter sun is shining, and the Gouda Mandra is my friend. All at once my childhood never left me And Wattle Blossom brings it back again All at once my childhood never left me Cause Wattle Blossom brings it back again Thank you, John Williamson. This is about a young man who uh, travels to London, as so many Irish men do, and gets a job there. And um, it's uh, 150 years ago, 140 years ago. So he gets a job, and he's uh, 130 years ago, I suppose. I'm calculating actually when it's written. And um, gets a job digging the metro. And he writes back to his wife about his life in Ireland. London's a wonderful sight Where the people here working By day and by night Sure they don't sow potatoes Nor barley nor wheat But there's gangs of them digging For gold in the street At least when I asked them That's what I was told So I just took a hand at this digging for gold But for all that I found there I might as well be Where the mountains of morn Sweep on down to the sea I'm going to tell a, a yarn tonight A yarn composed of threads Which I've picked up from various places and woven together. These threads form a yarn and uh, uh, I, think, uh, I think you might, uh, uh, might not have heard this one before, at least not from me. <laughs> uh, this yarn starts on Manly Pier. Some of you will remember Manly Pier and there used to be a pub in the corner of it, a little bar in the corner and myself and some of the blokes used to sit in this bar with our fishing rods. And when the ferries had come and go, as they left the wharf with a great swirl of propellers, we'd grab our fishing rods and flick a silver spinner into the propeller wash and try and spin up a, a, a nice um, a trevally uh, that loved that circular wash from the propellers. And one day I got me silver spinner caught on one of the piles and I climbed down the ladder to free this spinner and I looked down and there were 25 pound mackerel being chased by something. They were ch being chased out of the water like a school of sardines and I looked down and there was something that was about three feet between the eyes looking at me. <laughs> and this little fish jumped up to escape him and he ended up in the pocket of my shorts. So I climbed up the ladder and I put him in the bait tin on the bar and ordered another beer. And uh, as we were sitting there drinking, uh, this little fish jumped out of the tin and started slopping around on the bar on all the beer that was spilt on the bar. And he flicking around on his little fins and drinking it up like he uh, never tasted beer before. And then he jumped back into the tin and do backflips and somersaults. And I thought... About 7,000 soldiers and 1.5% of our population in Australia were killed. But <clears throat> the Turks lost 15% and 
and the Serbians lost 30% of their entire population in the First World War. I didn't even know they were a major ally, but that's what they lost. Anyway, when Eric Bogle was over in France, he saw a gravestone with Willie McBride on it. And nobody really knows to this day who the Willie McBride was. He sounds like a Scotsman, but he could have been an Australian, New Zealander, Canadian. Anyway, this is Willie McBride. Oh, well, how'd you do, young William McBride? Do you mind if I sit down by your graveside? I and rest for a while in the warm summer sun. Working all day and I'm nearly done. I see by your grave you were only 19 when you joined the Fallen in 1915. Hope you died quick, I, I hope you died clean. Willie McBride, was it slow and obscene? Did they beat the drum slowly, sound the fife lowly? Did they sound the death march when they lowered you down? Did the band play the last post and chorus? Did the pipes play the floors or the forest? Very interested in the election, but I thought uh, I might just do two verses of two different poems just before I do the, the main poem uh, by the late great John Dengate and just to show that John uh, could be impartial when it came to politics. Uh, one of the verses he wrote was, um, <clears throat> Oh dear, just how low have the Liberals sunk. The chosen as leader, the raving mad monk, a royalist ratbag, a popish ex-pug, reactionary Tory, the monarchist thug. They've sacked Malcolm Turnbull and put in his stead a bloke who's been punched far too hard round the head. <laughs> too many left hooks, which rather explains the crackpot ideas that roll round in his brains. <laughs> and then he wrote another part of his, another poem he wrote years before was, um, but back to Paul Keating, oh, what have we done? To end up with Bankstown's most arrogant son, I want a republic, but Keating so mean, I feel just a twinge of support for the Queen. <laughs> Thank you. 